hard to find this movie. It's currently not available on any streaming service. You can barely even find it on DVD. It rarely gets screened. So you guys are in for a treat. And that is something that a new organization called Missing Movies is trying to fix. They're trying to save mm. the hundreds, possibly thousands of movies made by American independent filmmakers out of rights purgatory so we can see them and enjoy them and restore an important part of film history. So we are very lucky to have with us today two people who know all about American independent cinema and they are also on the advisory council of Missing Movies. Please welcome filmmakers Alison Anders and filmmaker actor Peter Regat. <laughs> Hello, welcome. Hi. Hi, Alicia. I'm so excited to have you both here and, and especially to talk about missing movies because this is something that both of you have experienced being filmmakers. So Alison, can you tell us like what defines a missing movie to you? Well, it's one of those movies where you go, oh my God, I haven't seen this in so long. Where is it? I keep trying to find it and it's not streaming and it's not on Blu-ray and why not? And you're just like so mad that it's not. And then you find out, oh, we can't find this anywhere. <laughs> and sometimes you can't even find a print. So um, there's a whole variety of reasons, perhaps why. But, um, but I know it's always very fr frustrating, and maybe you'll see a YouTube you know, th I mean, thank God for YouTube in a way, mm -hmm. right? Because at least we get to see some semblance of it, some copies better than others, but it still means that nobody's getting paid for that. Yeah, and you know, Peter, it, there's this idea that everything's available on streaming, but it seems like with every new iteration of technology, we lose hundreds of films. Well, I, I've been thinking about this, um, this project, I mean, the concept of missing movies, and now that you're going to see played as it lays, uh, the first line in a Joan Didion book called The White Album is we tell ourselves stories in order to live. So movies and art and almost every cultural event is important to ourselves because it gives us the courage to keep going. Now, there's so many movies made every year that never see the light of day. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's an interesting problem. Which ones do you resurrect? Which ones do you bring back to life? Because it costs a lot of money to, uh, I guess, put everything together so it's got a, it looks good. Um, and also, we live in an era where we were talking backstage. The means of production have become totally democratized. Anybody mm -hmm. can take their iPhone and make a movie. But the thing that hasn't changed is the means of distribution, and that's always been a problem. Uh, I know a, I had done an independent film called King of the Corner, and I had an amazing cast and spoke to probably 20 different uh, distributors of independent films, and they all said the same thing, which was we don't know how to market it, which I found astounding since that's what they do. You know, like a, a brain surgeon saying, well, this looks kind of tough. I don't think I'm going to do this surgery. And I did speak to one fellow, and I said, uh, teach me something. I don't get it. You just told me you loved the film that I would like you to distribute. He said, well, I loved it, and my wife really loved it. And I said, well, enlighten me. And he thought for a little bit, and he said, we're lazy. I said, who's lazy? He said, distributors, we're lazy. Mm. The amount of energy, money, and time to devote to your half a million dollar movie might get us a half a million dollars. So we'd rather work on a $20 million movie and make $20 million. And I said, well, that sounds good theoretically, but nobody knows which movie's going to make $20 million. Exactly, and, and often the people that suffer are filmmakers who are not accepted to make $20 million movies in the first place. Yeah, and I think that uh, this is something interesting, you know, when I see what's on our, our list with uh, missing movies, is there's a lot of movies directed by women with mm -hmm. female stars. Um, so, you know, movies that, I, that were, you know, concurrent with my own career, like I shot Andy Warhol by Mary Heron, you can't believe that that movie's not available. You're like, what? Uh, oh yeah, it's not, is it? 
you know, or Cool World by Shirley Clark, um, by the great Milestone Films, by the way, who I believe they are here. <laughs> I love you so much. And who created Missing Movies. Um, you know, Shirley Clark's, but this, this Cool World, which was so influential on my own Mi Vida Loca, which is also a missing movie, um, really, uh, uh, you know, it's not, it's not available for people to see. So, um, you know, that's, that's the tricky thing, I think, is like what gets, um, but I remember this even with, um, with um, a friend of mine, Michael Friend, who, um, you know, is an archivist and, and who has restored uh, so many films. But working with a, a big studio, he would have to convince them that these films that all of us here love and the TCM family, right? that uh, these films were worth saving. And sometimes it's like a Douglas Sirk film. You can't even believe it. <laughs> right. you know? And I think it really, it really skewers our whole perception of the film canon. Mm -hmm. You know, our films think, are missing. I think the thing that's also amazing is over time, things that seemed important when they were first released lose their value because they don't sustain the test of time. So there are plenty of movies that are out there wanting to be found because they may tell us something about ourselves from another era. It's kind of like cultural archaeology. Mm -hmm. You're you're digging, but you don't know which pot or shard is going to change your life. That's that's not up to even for our group. That you know, we'll, they're going to be selecting what they can find and yeah. bring to life again. But only the individual viewer of a movie knows why it's valuable. Yeah, and the filmmakers themselves usually they don't even know why the film isn't available because you don't control the rights. And well, you know? that's the thing. It's kind of, um, you know, sometimes when we make these deals, we, you know, like for the music rights, for example, my daughter being a music supervisor was convinced that with my film, Maybe the Loca, that, that it was a music rights issue. And you sign these deals, and a lot of us in the... 90s independent filmmaker world did these deals that seemed really long term, you know, 20 years. Well, <laughs> you know, here we are. I can't get James Brown for $10,000? No, you cannot. You know, so this is what happens, and that even happened on my first film board of radio where we had to take um, out a little record that I found on the ground, you know, at the Capitol Records swap meet. You know, wow. so <laughs> we had to take it out because the rights went to Warner Chapel and, you know, it became something else. And a lot of people think, uh, not incorrectly, but if it's seen, it's therefore successful. Yes. And uh, I had done a movie called Chilly Scenes of Winter, which was based oh. on the Hello. Say hello. <laughs> and it was originally released as uh, had a different title, forget head over heels. Head over heels. Yeah. The right said, crowd to yeah, this question. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Smarter than we are. <laughs> uh, as they should be. Kind of, you know? uh, anyway, I said to somebody who released the film, I think it was, can't remember, but I said, Chilly Scenes of Winter, it's a book. It has an audience. And they said, well, it's too cold a title. Oh. I said, why? Because it's got winter and chili in it? Jeez. And he said, yeah. And the film was re-released by the, the, I think three years later in 1982 under its original title. So this idea of films being, you know, missing and being found again is, a, is an old tradition. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's something that we deal with a lot at TCM. You know, we'll get people coming up to us throughout this festival saying, why don't you play this movie on TCM? Or I want to see this film. And often it's just very complex in terms of the rights and licensing. And it's not that we don't want to play it, it's because we actually are not able to play it. But thank God for, you know, TCM and the festival. Absolutely. Yeah. And the other thing that's staggering is Nobody knows, uh, it's William Goldman, I guess, who coined the famous phrase, nobody knows anything. Mm -hmm. I don't think he meant that nobody knew their craft, but nobody knows which project yeah. is going to be uh, embraced by the audience. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those just fantastic things. It's a lucky accident, but that doesn't mean the movie should be disappearing, but it's up to, it's not like the individual artist who can fight for their you know, because we work in a collaborative medium. 
we need everybody and then it's just luck yeah, we're about to see Play It As It Lays, which is based on a wonderful novel by Joan Didion. I mean, it's such a loss when we don't get to see a film like this. For sure, for sure. And I think that it's, a, you know, the early 70s were such an interesting time for uh, women, uh, characters driving <coughs> narrative. And, I mean, she's literally driving in this. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, so she is driving this movie. Um, and so... Um, you know, it's, I mean, I, if I think about the early 70s and I think about Wanda or I think about this character, I think about... Um, Joan Silver. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Has Just so speak. many, yeah. so many beautiful, yeah. beautiful, beautiful, um, you know, women-driven movies. Well, I think the nice thing of this new era, it, I mean, I'm 76 now, so I can tell you I've seen some changes. And <laughs> it's just fascinating how all these new voices which have been pushing to be heard are starting to be heard yeah. and it was yeah. a different world when I started so it's to your point Alice it's really great yeah. to see but I worked with Joan Mickle and Silva I did yeah. two for her Incredible. well yeah. Crossing the Lancy is about the great yeah. grandchildren of yeah. Hester Street it's just yeah. unbelievable yeah for sure yeah. that's why it's so it's important okay. that we get to see films like this yeah, and yeah. get to restore their rights so Thank you to you both, and thank you to Missing Movies as well. And you can all can get involved with Missing Movies don't and help support audience. the cause. Yeah, <laughs> don't be a missing audience. Please join me in thanking Alison Anders and Peter Rickett. Thank you very much.